it's days like these that I miss living in California. Right now it's a snowstorm outside and it's almost mid-April. There are a lot of good things about Sweden, but it's not the weather, except for June to August. <laughs> well, so let's talk about when I used to live in California. So I currently live here, Stockholm, but between the ages of 23 to 30, I lived in the US. I lived one year in Seattle and four and a half years in San Francisco. And then the final year before I moved back to Sweden, I traveled around in a camper van all over the US. I visited all the states in the contiguous part of the US. So let's turn on photos here and you'll see that I've been a lot of places. So what I want to do is start a new YouTube series where I talk about my experiences in the US and that long trip. And now when it's so dark and gloomy outside, I just have this longing for California. So I thought, why not start there and talk about my favorite things about California and maybe some not so good things. We'll see. All right, it's story time. So when I first moved to California, I moved to San Francisco. Um, it's a very cool city. I love it a lot. It's stunning. And the weather is perfect for me. It's basically never above 70 Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, and it's, yeah, sunny almost all the time. Except if you live in this part, then it's foggy all the time. <laughs> so just be careful where you live. Um, and what I love about this part of the US is the stunning nature. It's just so breathtaking. These mountains here, let's turn on the map so you can see some names. So yeah, Sierra Nevada It's probably my favorite place in, in the whole US. Yosemite Na National Park. Wow, let's actually look at some photos there. So it's just this magical place. The mountains were created by a glacier during the ice age. Sliding ice created the canyons. And it's just magical. So if we go to the actual ca canyon, the main canyon is over here, Yosemite Village. There's waterfalls breathtaking and the views especially from this place here glacier point wow let's take a look at that i mean just look at this <laughs> it's insane you can see waterfalls this is one of my favorite photos i've ever taken i think it's a panorama it's just using my phone it's iphone 10 but the panorama, panorama is really good on that phone. So this gives you a sense of the scale of things. We're basically on top of a mountain. And this is just what you see in every di direction. It's just magnificent mountains and waterfalls. Yeah, so this has to be one of my favorite, place, favorite places in California and maybe even the whole US. Uh, but let's back up a bit. So after I lived in San Francisco, I was starting to feel like I wanted to move back to Sweden, but I wanted to go out with a bang. I feel like while I'm in the US, I might as well take advantage of it and see as much as possible. So what I did is I bought a camper van and first I spent every weekend for probably six months just converting it uh, and then yeah this is probably a photo of it here we go this is where I started uh, in the middle of, of all the build I think this is where is this from yeah July 
2018. That was when I had just bought it. And uh, yeah, so I started out just putting a bed here. Then I also started to research the laws, and it turns out, be yeah, sleeping in your vehicle, it's not very legal in some places. In San Francisco, in particular, uh, there's a lot of signs like this: habitation in vehicles prohibited, 10 p.m. to 6 p.m. every day. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, I started to sell some, sell, sell all my stuff. So this is <laughs> listings on Craigslist. Just taking photos of my belongings. Uh, but then I started to build out my van more. So, yes, getting the bed there. I actually bought these on Ikea. But I modified, like, this This is a bed frame that I cut into pieces and then put together in a new way. Uh, yeah, definitely have made it a lot nicer since this, uh, since this time. So this part in the back, I've put covers up here and also there's some... Uh, paintings here right now but yeah that was a great great experience just pulling out the van this is a video from inside it's a really nice feeling when you pull something yourself and just lying in the bed looking out on what you created and this is pretty close let's see yeah so this is actually right before I started the trip uh, relaxing at the beach in San Francisco here, Golden Gate Park, the west side. It's a good place to hang out. Great parking and a beautiful beach outside. Uh, so that's the build, build up of everything. And then middle of February, 2019, I finally started the trip and I went south. And that was an amazing feeling to just, of just freedom to know that everything you own is in this van. And I actually had one month off from work where I would just explore and could do whatever I want. So that was really exciting. And oh, I can also say that I actually worked while I was traveling around in the US for one year. I worked three days a week remotely as a software engineer. So that actually turned out pretty well. I felt like I still had enough time to explore. And one thing I noticed is if you travel full time after a month or so, which is what, what I did in the beginning, you actually start to become kind of burned out on traveling. It's so many new things every day. So you actually need to like take it easy sometimes. And working actually forces you to take it easy, at least take a break from traveling. So it's actually a good balance to work part time while out and about traveling. Uh, but yeah, let's go back to this now. So I started out in San Francisco. Then I went south. I think the first night was in Visalia. Did I take a photo of that? I did not. Well, it's not that important. It's not, this part is not that interesting in California, I think. Let's turn on the satellite again to get some context. So this is a big valley. I think it's called Central Valley. Could be, could be wrong. It's been a while now, but it's very, very hot. It's like you can't even be outside in the summertime, that kind of hot. And there's farms everywhere. I mean, the map is just sprinkled with farmland and very flat. So this part of the, of the state, I would just avoid. But they do have a very, very cheap uh, produce produce there. I think I saw a deal with eight avocados for one dollar. <laughs> in Sweden you get one avocado for two dollars. So I miss those kind of prices. Uh, but let's see. So I went here and then my trip. I don't think I need to uh, go through the whole trip but I basically spent a lot of time here in East California and also uh, let's turn on the map so you can see the state lines. So Nevada, Arizona, Utah. I started out here, and then I went north. Then I got down again and got, got around in a circle here, I think. Then I traveled, traveled east and then south and then back again. But let's 
focus on California today. So, yeah, like, like I started out with saying, uh, Yosemite, definitely up there in terms of my favorite places in the US. Uh, but even, yeah, basically anywhere in this mountain chain, mountain chain called Sierra Nevada is stunning all the way from the top with Lassen National Park over here. Really cool vol vol volcanic area. Uh, so that's the north part of the state and of Sierra, Sierra Nevada. And if you go south, you come to Lake Tahoe, which is amazing. This is very high up in the, in the mountains. There's this huge lake. Uh, it's just really beautiful. And then if you go even further south, that's when you get to Yosemite, which I showed you already. Let's just make sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah, so that's Yosemite. And then if you go even further south, I think this might be even better than Yosemite, actually. Uh, Sequoia National Park, which is where the sequoia trees grow, which are the largest trees in the world by volume. Not by height, but by volume. They're like so, so big. Uh, this right here <laughs> is the base of the tree. Yeah, so that's a person right there for some scale. So you can see how big these trees are. And I think, yeah, this is actually the big Sherman, is that the name? This is the biggest tree in the world. I think I have a better photo of it. Um, is this, yeah, maybe not the best, but that will do. This is, this is what they look like. This is in the winter time. This is actually in May. It's snowing in May. So I guess I shouldn't be too disappointed with Sweden <laughs> because there's definitely parts of the US where it snows and it's colder than Sweden. So that's Sequoia National Park. And I was there two times during my trip. Uh, I think after the first time I got so blown away that I realized I had to go back because it's so beautiful. I think I have, yeah, this is, this is, these are some of my favorite photos I've ever taken. The whole area is just so stunning. It's up in the mountains and you basically see down to the Central Valley, which is very flat, but you can't see it here because of the fog. But it's just so vast and unique. Yeah, it's great. And I love just walking around in the sequoia forests. They're just, it's so, it's so calming. Just imagine walking here with these giants everywhere. It's like, a, I don't know, it doesn't feel like you're on the planet Earth anymore. You feel like you're on a completely different planet. And they're so majestic. It's, I don't know, it's just, you feel very small and you feel like connected to the world. I don't know. Uh, let's see, do I have any other photos here that are worth showing? Yeah, so one thing to note is there's some famous trees here. This is the biggest tree in the world by volume. And just, it's very crowded down here. But as soon as you leave the main trail, which is like here, you get the forest basically for, for yourself. And it's, it's just so nice to walk all alone in this majestic forest. So definitely recommend going here. So I think I spent about two weeks or so there. Definitely want to go back there again. Um, so if you continue south, you basically come to the end of the mountain chain and Lake Isabella is at the bottom. And that's actually the first place I, I guess the first destination when I started my trip. 
it's a really cool place. <laughs> this is a good picture of me. <laughs> I looked pretty different back then. Uh, had long hair. Yeah, I think it matches the style of a uh, nomadic lifestyle traveling around. This map here, I put crosses everywhere I went. So by the end of the trip, this map was completely full. And actually, I still have it up on my wall right there. <laughs> and I like go going over to it and looking back on the different places. Brings back memories. Uh, let's move on. So now we've covered Sierra Nevada. 10 out of 10. Great place. There's so much to talk about in California. I could probably spend hours just talking about different places. But I'm going to try to keep it a bit short. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so let's talk about what happens east of Sierra Nevada. So this valley here is called Orange Valley, I think. And it's very different from the west side of the mountain chain. What happens is all the water from the coast comes here and it gets absorbed by everything along the way and finally it turns into snow here or just evaporates I don't know I'm not sure exactly what happens or what it's called but the point is on the east side it's completely dry which is a very stark contrast from the west side you can see here it's like farms everywhere here it's like a big dead <laughs> area but it's very beautiful uh, so, yeah, this is in the beginning of the trip, one of the first nights I spent. And it was actually pretty scary, because I was very new to this whole thing. And it got very dark here, like pitch black. And there's no one here. So it can actually creep you out a bit. But after a while you get used to it, and I started to actually really enjoy uh, the quietness and the remote, like, the feeling of being on a spaceship almost, when it's completely black outside and you're just in this capsule in your own world, basically. It's very comforting, but can be scary if you're not used to it. Uh, so this is a good picture of what it looks like. It's very flat, and this is Sierra Nevada. And then it's op big open fields of just dirt, or in some cases there's some water, or if there's no water, then it can be salt that's left over from water when the water has er evaporated just the salt remains so if you go north here there's some cool places so this is lone pipe it's very nice yeah this is a very cool spot really cool stone formations and they record a lot of movies here because it looks very unique and interesting some cool arches. It's a very surreal place. And then this is the highest mountain peak in the contiguous part of the US. I went to the start of the trail just to check it out. It's very cool here. I want to go on that trail one day. That would be fun. Um, so even further north, it gets colder. And this is actually a pretty good place for skiing, Mammoth Lakes up here. Uh, but Bishop is also a nice place. Spent a lot of time there. Had some friends coming over. Uh, when I lived in San Francisco and we went on a road trip to Bishop. That was very fun. But I also went here during my solo trip. This is, uh, yeah, a nice place where I spent the night. And then if you go further north, you get to this weird, surreal lake, Mono Lake, which has these really weird formations of clay. I, I, I don't even know what it is, but it's very 
dramatic. And when I was there, one of the times, uh, it's very intense weather, rain and hail, I think. So that's a place I re recommend. Very cool. And here's a mountain pass going through Yosemite. So I think that covers it. There's also a pass here that goes north of Yosemite. But there's not much to see here. I mean, the path itself is really cool. But it's a lot of more driving to go north. And up here, I haven't seen that much. There might be some cool places that I missed. I don't know. But that's Orange Valley. Um, let's see, what else do we got here? So we got the coast. And then we have the southern part of the state. And the north part, I guess, is also left. What should we go? Where should we go first? Let's talk about the coast. I mean, the coast is very famous. <laughs> I think everyone knows about the west coast of the US. It's so beautiful. Sunset for days everywhere. And when you leave the cities, it becomes very rugged and cool. Uh, Big Sur is one of my favorite places along the coast. It's very open and cool. This bridge is very famous. So it's not a very good picture of it. But this, on the other hand, is a better picture. Yeah, this is what it feels like to be on the coast. It's just magical. It's in the morning, I think. Here's some other pictures. Spent a lot of time there. There's a lot of fog coming from the ocean. So sometimes if you're unlucky, you'll get very bad visibility and your drip is basically ruined because you can't see anything. <laughs> but when you do see things, oh man. So nice. Uh, so let's see, that's between San Francisco and LA. Big Sur. Basically the whole coast is worth visiting. I don't really think I have a favorite place. I mean, Big Sur is a big favorite, but also this right here, just outside of LA. It's just so beautiful. So, yeah, you can't go wrong if you travel here. Yeah, I, I was, I've driven this whole road uh, going between LA and San Francisco. I highly recommend that. And then if you go north, this part here is very cool too. I don't think I have any pictures here, but I definitely spent time here. It's very, very nice. And then if you go really far north, we're still in California, but we're getting close to Oregon now. Uh, what happens here is the redwood forests. There are actually redwoods along the coast in some spots, especially outside San Santa Cruz. Here. There's some really good spots here. So redwoods are cousins to sequoia trees. And sequoias are the ones that were the biggest trees by volume here in Sierra Nevada, but these are actually the tallest trees in the world. And Redwood National Park is one of the best places to see red, 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 redwood trees. They are so cool. It's actually hard to take photos of them because they're so tall that you can't <laughs> basically fit them in the frame. Uh, is this going to work? Yeah. And even when the trees are not redwood trees, the forests here are just so spectacular. They're very deep and very humid. A lot of moss because it's so close to the coast and there's a lot of water coming in from the coast in uh, both as fog, but also as rain. So I definitely recommend this place. It's fun driving here. Um, so that's the northern, the northern part. 
and then if you want to go further south along the coast you can go down to LA I'm not going to talk too much about LA because I'm not a big fan of LA <laughs> I've been there a couple of times but I like nature I don't really like cities in general uh, San Diego it's a cool city definitely prefer that over LA the the best part is they have really some really nice places along along the coast this place here it's just a lot of birds and is that sea lions I think so very nice uh, okay so that's the coast now let's talk about the southern part of the state inland inland so it's actually really cool east of la it's this really wild place it's a desert a lot of different types of deserts uh, so one of my favorites is joshua tree national park this is I spent one of the most stunning nights here so this is just south of uh, the <clears throat> the park so this is in end of february very early on in the trip and the flowers are blooming that early and this is an open area where a lot of people would just park their vehicles really cool vibe and the sunset is ah, wow so it's definitely made me really hyped for the trip it's just like two weeks into the trip or something like that it's just a great experience and then if you go from here into the park itself there's basically one road through the park and then it goes west a bit but yeah this main road is cool and then there's some really cool cactuses here cactus garden i don't know what to call it very cool very dangerous they actually latch onto you very easily so be careful but it's a very cool landscape just vast open spaces and then further north there are also some cool things oh was that the same place maybe the gps is wrong i don't know so this is me <laughs> my hat to protect me from the sun uh, I don't know if you noticed, but yeah, I don't like the sun. I want to cover myself as much as possible. Some really cool rocks here. And then, what else is there? Yeah, a good viewpoint here. It's kind of sad because there's so much pollution there, but it's still very cool to see. So that part is very cool. Uh, this part here and then there's Salton Sea west of jo Joshua Tree National Park which is a really surreal place of like a dead sea that was created by a accident by I think a re re reservoir got rerouted wrong or something and it created this this sea here that used to be a nice resort but now it's just dead and it's really really weird this place here actually the sand most of it is actually not sand it's like dead fish scales really weird oh this was pretty funny there were some tourists that yeah they were very stupid they just drew off onto the beach and then they got stuck then they had to get towed by the police they probably got a big fine but they got it coming for them because you're not allowed to to drive on on the on the oceans no on the on, on the beaches i actually tried to help them but i couldn't yeah i tried to give them these like things you put on the the wheels but it didn't help oh i also got sunburned here <laughs> yep i don't like the sun because you can get sunburned. This is a cool place. If you go to this area south of the sea is where you'll find this. Salvation Mountain. 
really cool. This place is very cool. In general, Slab City is a, is what it's called. It's like a community where people just live. Anarchy, basically. It's kind of scary. Maybe it's not really that dangerous, but it feels like it's an a anarchy there. I've driven through it, but I wouldn't want to like spend a lot of time there because you never know. I don't think there's many police there. Not much in terms of protection. And a lot of people go there because they want to be able to do whatever they want. I don't know. It's pr probably fine. Uh, but that's... Yeah, so that covers this part here, which is the east part of California. If you go further east, you get to Arizona, which I will cover in a different video. The focus now is on California. So we've also got Mojave National Preserve here, which is really, really cool. All the different areas here are really, really, really cool. So nice. I think it's a morning. Having some coffee. So that covers it. Uh, I guess we haven't covered one of the coolest places actually, which is Death Valley. I think that's in California, right? Yeah, Death Valley National Park. Oh wow, this place is surreal. It's basically a big desert. Not everything is like dunes like this. Most of it is, is shrubs and dried up lakes and really weird stone formations. And you have to be careful about what time of the year you're there because in the summer it gets extremely hot. It's actually the, the hottest place on earth. The, yeah, the the place where they've recorded the highest temp temperature. But it's really be beautiful in its own way. So my, so my family came and visit and we spent some time there. So the one part we haven't covered so far is uh, Northern California. If you go north of the Central Valley, let's get some context here. Yeah, so this is San Francisco, Central Valley here. And then we talked about Lassen, which is a volcanic national park and forest. But then there's, yeah, so, so at the end of the valley, there's a new mo mountain chain popping up, which is very cool. And that's also on the border to uh, Oregon. So, yeah, so I, sp uh, I went east to west here, going through Redding. Redding is kind of boring. I would not want to spend a lot of time there. <laughs> but the nature is pretty cool. So coming down to the valley, you can already see the other side. It's just very flat in the middle, and then the new mountain chain on the west pops up which is very nice and those mountains are pretty spectacular this was in middle of march so it was still very snowy yeah i definitely liked going through the mountains here uh and then a lot of yeah like snake roads to get to the coast and not a good, not a lot of good reception, so that's kind of tough. If you're trying to work, <laughs> you need good reception. Uh, okay, so that that's it. That covers California. Thank you for joining me in this video. Uh, it was really fun to go back and look at my old photos. And I think I will continue with this series. I don't know what I'll do next. Maybe. We'll go north and look at Oregon, or we'll go east and look at Nevada, Utah, and Arizona. We'll see. So until next time, thank you for watching, and bye!